the Oilers Stanley Cup window is closed? Apparently it is, according to one Toronto media member. And also we hear from the newest oiler, Vasily Podkoles. And before we know all the breakdown, all the news, all the rumors, make sure to stay tuned here to Oilers Digest. As 89% of you watching these videos have not yet subscribed to the channel. We're past the, the Holloway and Broberg offer sheet fiasco. That is all said and done. So now let's get right into it. Yes. The window, of course, you know, with the, the losses of Broberg and Holloway, many are saying the Oilers, their, you know, their future success is is no longer. And that's according to Drew Livingstone, better known as producer Drew from the Steve Dangle Podcast Network. That's where many of us know him from. And he says here, this marks the end of the Oilers championship window, of course, replying to Elliot Friedman or quoting Elliot Friedman, I should say, when Philip Broberg and Dylan Holloway uh, were not matched. The Oilers did not match their contracts. And then Elliot also added in one thing I believe is key here. Edmonton wants flexibility to add in season. And Drew also went on to say that Darren Olner's contract continues to hinder the Oilers. Now, two things. Uh, one thing is, is true here, and that is not the Darn Olner's contract situation. It is the fact the Oilers' window is apparently closed. I mean, looking at the roster for 2024-25, I mean, the offense, uh, it's stellar. I mean, sure, the defense could use a little work there, especially on that right side that we're after Bouchard. You got Ty Emerson, who they just acquired from the San Jose Sharks, Troy Stetcher, Josh Brown, and then you have the prospects that are also on that right side. Philip Kemp, Max Warner, and Carrick there. I mean, sure, that, that leaves a lot to be desired, but like uh, like I said here, the, the key word from Elliot Friedman here, one thing I believe is key, Edmonton wants flexibility to add in season, and that's exactly why they didn't match here with Puckpedia, uh, the cap-friendly new replacement with the Oilers not matching Broberg and Holloway. They now have 946,000 projected cap space for 21 healthy players plus Evander Kane. With no moves, this can fit 4.4 million at the deadline and of course there's also retention in play here when it comes to trading at the deadline or they could submit a roster including Matt Savoy that's 59,000 under the cap put Kane on LTIR and be able to exceed cap by 5 million while Kane is out they would not accrue cap space though and when later exiting LTIR would start at zero space accrued so I don't believe the plan it here is to put Kane on LTIR to start the season I do believe that's what Stan Bowman said start the season with Kane of course, dealing with the the surgery there for sports hernia, uh, lots of variables again in play. But to say the window is closed, uh, not too likely here from David Staples of the Cult of Hockey from the Edmonton Journal. He says, as for the Oilers' Stanley Cup window, it's not an easy thing to win a cup in a 32-team league. It's even tougher to remain a contending team over time in an NHL that pushes teams to the middle. The NHL gives lower teams top draft picks. Of course, that's how the Oilers got Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl, amongst many other players that they've won in the lottery over the years, like Neil Yakupov, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Taylor Hall, to say the least. How Toronto got Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and Morgan Riley, as well as massive cash subsidies from wealthy teams. It puts a limit on the amount top teams can spend on talent, as you know, fans of the Leafs know well when it comes to you putting all their chips on three or four players. That said, Oilers fans can wake up today with McDavid, Drysaddle, and Bouchard leading their team, well supported by Zach Hyman, Matias Ekholm, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Stuart Skinner, Evander Kane, newly acquired Victor Arvidsson, Brett Kulak, Jeff Skinner, Evander Kane, and a solid checking line of Adam Henry, Connor Brown, and Matias Yanmark. So when you see all those players, the window, it is more than open. And final thoughts here from David Staples. The Oilers, he says the team is stacked. It's starting to replenish the prospect pool with players like Matthew Savoy and Sam O'Reilly. It has solid NHL players willing to sign here on discount contracts, as you saw there with Jeff Skinner and Victor Arvidsson. And especially Adam Henrique, too. He could have tested the market and got a lot more, but he chose to come back to uh, come back to Edmonton to finish the story. And they will continue to build around McDavid and Drysaddle for years to come. Of course, they're still waiting on Leon Drysaddle. Settles contract extension, and then next summer, Connor McDavid and Evan Bouchard. The Broberg and Holloway fiasco is a blow, no doubt. Toronto sports execs will have their chuckle, as well as many oiler hating fans across Canada, especially, you know, the Canuck and Flames fans. Uh, they are willing to, you know, uh, have their laugh at Edmonton, but I mean, uh, take what you can get, right? The Oilers window is wide open. It will remain so for years to come. So, Oiler fans, I'm not worried, and uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't have any reason to worry uh, with the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, when you have Leon Duraisaitl and Connor McDavid, amongst many other players that are willing to actually, you know, be in Edmonton, 
there is no reason to worry but to say the window is closed that is uh that is just a hot take i fell for it and many others did but that was just you know worth worth mentioning there and lastly here this silly pod colson speaks yes the newly acquired edmonton Oilers right winger i uh, had a few interesting tidbits to mention uh, as he was introduced uh, to the oilers fan base he said, my wife and I were driving to Ikea to look at furniture for our new apartment when the Canucks general manager called and said I'd been traded to Edmonton. He said, via translation, we talked briefly and thanked each other. Then the Oilers general manager called, Stan Bowman, of course, and said they were waiting for me on the team, of course. I was shocked by the trade, he said. After all, this is the first such experience in my career. Now I've realized it, I want to continue preparing for the season and arrive at the new team in good shape. It's important to fit in. Edmonton is assembling a good team. I hope I can help them win. I've been a man Vancouver two, for two weeks now. I had a settled life here, but the NHL is a business, and a trade can happen any time. This trade is a good opportunity for me as a player. I want to play in win as much as possible. That's the main thing. I'll be flying to Edmonton soon. I think in two weeks, my wife and I will get all sorted out with the daily issues in Vancouver, and then we'll get ready for the new place. So, uh... Uh, off to a great start here for Vasily Potkols, and he's excited to c- come to Edmonton, you know, uh, a fresh new start. And I know Vancouver wasn't necessarily the best situation for him, despite, you know, the team having success last year. But for him, not so much. You can say their last year, 19 games played, only two assists. So not really uh, a whole lot for him to to shine on the ice and just looking here at the, the stat sheets. You can see there in his debut season, 79 games played, so nearly a full season here for Pod Colson in Vancouver, 26 points. So, I mean, uh, a, a great debut season. And then when it comes to, you know, between Abbotsford and Vancouver, uh, hasn't been quite able to replicate those numbers. And just looking at the analytics here, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, I don't want to say low numbers across the board. They're, you know, 46% finishing on a Vancouver team that was like lights out offensively last year is a bit worrisome, but I mean, that was in the bottom six here. And you're, you're just expecting him to be, you know, be a, a solid defensive forward in the bottom six. You're not expecting him to, you know, be lights out whatsoever. So it's nice for Paul Colson to come to Edmonton and, like I said, get a fresh start. There's a scouting report here before the 2019 NHL draft. So one of the most controversial prospects for the entry draft is Vasily Pod Colson. He doesn't have earth-shattering numbers, but it's hard to find anyone who doesn't like his tools. What my eyes are telling me about Pod Colson is he's a power winger who works and competes extremely hard. He never quits on a play, even when others do. If you don't want to give your 100% playing against him, he's going to win. He's a well-rounded player who doesn't cheat for offense, but has lots of offensive abilities. He has good leadership qualities, and he leads by example on the ice. He's capable of energizing the entire team with his play, and that's, I think, what the Oilers are trying to get out of him. Again, with Pod Coles and his energy on the team is what they need. That's exactly the type of player they need in the bottom six. They need someone who can energize the entire team uh, and be very responsible defensively. I know there's a fan favorite, Yasu Pugliarvi. I liked him. He was pretty much just that. I mean, you couldn't expect anything out of him offensively. But when it came to the defensive side of the game, he was phenomenal. And I think he might become a fan favorite Edmonton too. And when the Oilers leaves one of their Swedish meatballs with Philip Roberg, hopefully Pod Colson picked some up at Ikea after he was done shopping. That's it for today's video. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Pod Colson and what you think about the Oilers Stanley Cup window. Is it closed? Is it still open? How long will it be open for? That's it for today's video. Have yourselves a great day. Again, let me know down in the comments what you think about the Oilers uh, after the whole offer sheet scenario. Have yourselves a great day. I'm Matt.